know God, discover purpose, identify gifts, serve to make a difference. Are you ready to take the next step in moving your life and ministry forward? It's time to get a better understanding of who God has called you to be and how your unique gifts fit in the kingdom. Zion is a place of growth and deeper understanding of the Word of God. Give your time and talent to truly make a difference in the lives of others. Join us as we do life together. Find your fit, find your faith, find your future here at the Mount. Mount Zion, there are five ways that you can stay connected. All of our social media platforms are MTZ Zion Cathedral, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And remember, you can always email us at admin at mtzcc.net. Zion, join us every Monday for Monday Morning Meditation with Bishop A.M. Moore every Monday at 6 a.m. Mount Zion Cathedral, remember we have online church service going every Sunday. Join us online at 9 a.m. on Facebook Live at MTZ Zion Cathedral. Join us for online Bible study every Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Facebook Live at MTZ Cathedral. Friends and family, if you would like to connect with the ministry, there are three ways that you can do so. Visit us at connect.mtzcc.net email us at admin at mtzcc.net or you can call us 205-605-9466 we look forward to connecting with you mount zion we thank you for your continued support remember there are three ways that you can give through cash app givelify and you can always mail your offerings and seeds in teacher and the helper and the witness of God. I covet the gift of teaching for this assignment. And I ask now that you would stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my tongue, that your kingdom come and that your will would be done in this place, that your word would become the truth that we treasure, that gives us the grace necessary to triumph over every trial, tribulation, and tragedy that we might encounter in life. Now get all of the glory as you add to our story. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, as we prepare to go into the lesson of this evening, for those that know the worth and the power of prayer, I would ask uh, that you would keep the uh, Bishop Delano Ellis, um, one of the leading uh, figures from a historical as well as a leadership perspective, uh, Bishop Ellis was a uh, uh, part of my consecration council um, in 2017, one of the most revered and respected among African American bishops uh, in this nation and even other parts of the world. He has transitioned and their celebration of his life uh, is this week. A brother that I grew up with, we competed against one another uh, in high school uh, and uh, uh, become uh, very uh, complimentary and uh, challenging one another. Uh, Pastor Freedom Woods uh, has transitioned and we keep the Woods family uh, lifted up. Uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, we were privileged to help celebrate their father's 87th year of living uh, and uh, we're living in times where uh, every day and every moment is precious and uh, now the scripture in the Psalms uh, comes alive even more 
or teach us the number of our days that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. Um, and so uh, we, uh, we are heavy hearted, but at the same time, we understand uh, the assignment of uh, what God has graced and gifted us uh, to do. And so just uh, keep the Woods family and those that uh, hold him dear and near uh, to him. He had a wife and uh, two sons, and, uh, definitely an army of brothers and sisters. Um, and Papa Woods is still on this side. And so uh, my mother and I uh, often joke uh, and talk about uh, uh, you can't leave me and I can't leave you and that. Uh, but it used to be a time where uh, parents didn't have to bury children. And now we're seeing that a lot more uh, than we've had in the past instead of uh, children burying parents. Amen. Thank you so much for uh, your prayers. Uh, that uh, God would give us strength uh, to stay true to uh, the assignment of the hour. Amen. Uh, we've been in a series of study dealing with uh, dealing with transition, and it hits us in our face again. Uh, transition is inevitable, uh, but how we deal with it uh, is a choice. Transition is inevitable, but how we deal with it is a choice. And so we've been on this journey to attempt uh, to engage our thinking and understanding uh, in the process of what has God given us? What has God given us uh, to be able to deal with uh, transition? And we believe that uh, there is an infrastructure and an outer structure. Uh, I think that everything uh, that exists, uh, our inner structure, the uh, the different systems that make up our body, uh, you don't necessarily see them, uh, but you experience you experience uh, the evidence of them being in operation. And so we are on the sixth part of this uh, teaching, and this is the fifth lesson, and we're talking about gifts to the church. Now, remember, though, when we use that uh, conjunction to, uh, it deals with direction, it deals with movement. So uh, it is to get us to the point and in the direction of moving according to the will of God. We talked about uh, several of the gifts uh, for or to the church. We talked about the gift of the apostle, the gift of the prophet, the gift of evangelism, the gift of pastor on last week. And we conclude uh, this week because we'll move from gifts to the church to talking about gifts for the church okay then we'll start dealing with the, those gifts that are varying in nature and so as we peruse Ephesians uh, chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4 has been the passage that we've used as a point of reference Ephesians 4 verses 7 and 8 uh, this is the second doctrinal letter that the Apostle Paul writes we know that he wrote one to the church of Rome, and now he's writing to the church of Ephesus. One dealt with the doctrine uh, according to Romans, and we'll allude to that in just a moment. Uh, and this letter deals with us walking with God in heavenly places or in uh, different realms of authority in the earth. Now, this scripture, verses 7 and 8 from Ephesians 4, reads accordingly, but to each one of us a grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Okay, so uh, I'm trusted to steward what don't belong to me. It's Christ's gift. Amen. And therefore, he says, uh, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men gave gifts to me. Well, in uh, this same chapter, we find out what was the gift that he gave to men. What are the gifts that he gave to men? And so we've discussed and analyzed each one of those gifts. So our focus has been rooted in understanding uh, the importance of how to deal with and how to address changing events and experiences, changing life events and experiences. Okay, and so we've discussed and we've been discovering the Apostle Paul's formula 
of dealing with the doctrinal side and the duty side. So Paul says, before you go to act the duty, be trained. One of the great um, challenges that we've got to uh, do, I think, even from um, a family perspective, a ministry perspective, a life perspective, uh, we've got to be trained before we can be trusted. Uh, I, I did a teaching some years ago uh, dealing uh, with uh, that uh, if you can't train them, you can't trust them can't train them you can't trust them so people that can't be trained can't be trusted now uh, when we talk about training we're talking about the discipline of that particular area we're talking about learning the discipline of that particular area okay so we always give keys and we're going to continue in that format that's my style and platform of presentation um, we understand and we use the acronym KEYS. We want you to have a knowledge that empowers you for success. We want you to have a knowledge base that empowers you for success. A knowledge base that empowers you for success. So Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12 uh, gives us the backdrop or the clarity or the direction as we prepare to talk about this teaching gift. We're going to be using Romans chapter 12 and verse 7 as the premise for that discussion. But when we talk about this gift of teaching, when we talk about this gift of teaching, the gift of teaching is a, a divine strength and or ability to study and to learn uh, from the scripture primarily uh, to bring understanding and depth to other Christians, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. I want you to get it. Okay, when we talk about uh, the gift of preaching, when we talk about the gift of teaching, uh, the premise or the practice is to uh, bring or the ability to study. Okay, and I want you to emphasize that word, to study and learn. You're going to see us dealing with this throughout these scriptural references that we'll use to expound on this. Because now I believe the reason we have... Uh, so many people that are all over the place when it comes to the doctrine of Christianity because um, they're, 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 there's limited study or there's misapplication and information that's applied in the study, and that's the reason we aren't learned. Isn't it interesting that others, uh, you, 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 you would go to Islam, the nation of Islam, or Islam at large, and there is, it's a way of life. It's a way of life. It's not just something uh, that we do on Wednesdays and Sundays. It's a way of life. And so my assignment is to prayerfully help navigate us toward life application as a believer. Life application as a believer. I live this. I don't just teach this. I don't just preach this. I don't just speak this. I don't just read this. I don't just study this. But 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 the the, the scripture is my way of life. Okay. So so when we talk about this teaching gift, uh, it is uh, the divine strength and or ability to study and to learn from the scriptures not everywhere else not from everybody else but from the scriptures primarily to bring understanding and depth to other Christians so we shouldn't be shallow we shouldn't be on milk forever we've got to grow in the faith we got to grow in the faith so there are several passages of references there are several passages of references uh, that we uh, expound on and, uh, and uh, allude to, but I want you to write these down. Uh, Acts chapter 18, verses 24 through 28 is one passage, and then Acts chapter 20, 20 and 21. Acts chapter 18, verses 24 through 28. Acts chapter 20, verses 20 through 21. Okay? Those are two. Then we're going to look at James chapter one, or uh, James chapter three, verses one and two. Uh, but 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 uh, I think it's highlighted on the screen. James chapter uh, three, verses one through three. But we're going to focus on something uh, uh, verses one and two. Then that's First Corinthians twelve and twenty-eight. 
and you've seen that scripture possibly in all of the references that we've used. Ephesians 4, 11 through 14, you've seen that particular passage. And then Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8, and we're going to focus on verse 7. Amen. Romans chapter chapter, um, chapter 12, uh, verses 6 through 8, but we're going to be highlighting verse 7 uh, today in our study. Listen to the text talk, and it talks about giving of ministry. Let us use it or our, or our ministry, okay, in it our ministry who teaches in teaching. Okay, who teaches in teaching. Now, when you read it from the King James Version, it'll say uh, giving uh, ministry, uh, the ministry to minister, uh, to ministering, uh, and to teaching, uh, to teaching, uh, teaching. Okay, so what it says, I can't give you what I don't have. Okay, uh, we, we don't contra up these gifts. Either you got it or you don't. Okay, either you have it or you don't. And so I'm not envious or jealous of anybody because now when you come to the understanding that God gave you what was necessary for your assignment and God gave me what was necessary for our assignment, but now the issue is sometimes wanting what somebody else has and never maximizing what he gave you. And so when we look at minister, minister or ministering, when we look at that particular part of the verse, we're looking at it from the perspective minister or ministering uh, in, in Romans 12, verse 7. Uh, it, it, it is the word uh, that deals with the same root word that we get diakonia from or diakonos from, where we get the word deacon or servant from. Now, watch. It is to serve as providing a service. It is to serve as to provide a service. Okay? So now it is that ability that I have, that you have, uh, that others have as uh, doing ministry. So now as a minister, I do ministry. So now one of the injustices we've done, we minimize the word minister to only being those that are called to preaching the gospel. But the foundational root of the word is that all of us are here to provide some form of service. Teach, boy. Okay, all right? So everybody has a ministry, okay? You're not necessarily all called to the gospel preaching ministry, but you have a ministry that serves to serve in some way others, okay? Now, this is the emphasis because we couldn't uh, just go over this and pass by it without addressing, but we want to deal with teaching. This gift of teaching. Now, I, I want you to understand. I want you to understand uh, uh, this. So, when we deal with the the, the word teaching, uh, we're, we're dealing with it uh, from the perspective. Watch, um, it is to um, um, have the ability to give instructions. Okay, learn instructions to give instructions. So if I'm going to teach, I have to first learn what it is that I'm teaching. Okay? Are you understanding me? All right? All right? So, so, so um, now in teaching, now to share it with others, I have to have learned it myself. So uh, my brother, um, one of, one of, the, one of the, the, the beauties, I, I, I realized that when he was doing his undergraduate study, uh, he was, he's an educator. And so he had finished all of his core curriculum classes. He had finished all of his core curriculum classes. He was through with his classes, but he could not get his degree. He could not get his degree because he had to do what they call student teaching. He had to do what they call student teaching. And in doing student teaching, he had to sit under a seasoned teacher to, to learn, watch what textbooks don't teach. Okay? Because all of my learning don't come from textbook. Some of it comes from being under the right tutelage. Okay? Having the right individual that you're able to be engaged with. And so he could not get his degree until he did student teaching. He 
He could not get his degree until he did student teaching, okay? So he had to spend however many weeks or semester, whatever the, the time frame was. I'm not, um, I'm not able to remember exactly what that was, but he could not get his degree until he did student teaching. So now uh, an effective teacher is able to engage their audience, okay? An effective teacher is able to engage their audience. They're able to pull their audience into the instructional part of what they are, they are doing. So I want to give you four things that to possibly look at and to deliberate about uh, as we, we, we move forward uh, in this. So come with me now to Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9 says, Give instructions to wise men, and they will be still wiser. Give instructions to wise men, and they'll be uh, even wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Okay, let's go to work. So now it says give instructions. In the original text, the word instruction is not that. It said give to wise men. Okay, when we look at that word wise, uh, it, it, uh, uh, it, 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 it derives from uh, the meaning of, of, of being intelligent, being skillful, or being artistic, or, or being an artist, okay? Listen to me good. When, when we look at the word wise, so instructions, that's information being shared, information being disseminated. So when we look at this, when we say wise, now he defines what wise, and I don't want you to miss it because I want to go to the root of that word. Um, but when he defines wise, watch this, it means to be intelligent. It means to be skillful. It means to be an artist. Mm. Uh, Chad, Chadwick Bozeman changed my whole dynamics of 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 presenting um hopefully uh we we we're taking the canvas of this 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 information uh to be able to paint it in a way that everyone that is listening will able be be able to live leave with 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 what they need but he said something when he was being interviewed they were interviewing him and he said uh they called him an actor he says i don't consider myself to be an actor i consider myself as an artist so, so, so what, whatever the role was that he was playing, he added, uh, he added uh, a particular flavor or taste to it that, that put his signature there. What, what mark are you making and leaving in the areas that, that, that you are participating in? And so he says, give instruction to the wise, and they'll be wiser. So he says, now watch. When you go to the root, so now, Lorenzo, I don't want you to miss it. So, so when we go to the root of this, watch the root of the word wise. So he says, then I'm going to tell you what to be wise in. He said, wise in mind, wise in words, wise in act. Come here, come here, come here. So, so now when I'm wise, you'll see, you'll see it in the way I think. You'll see it in the way I speak. You'll see it in the actions I take. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Okay, my thinking, okay, all right, all right. My talking, uh-huh, all right. And my acting, my, my, my movement, my doing. Okay, so now wise people, you, once the wisdom is upon them, you'll see it in their thought life. You'll see it in the words that are proliferating from their mouths. And you'll also see it in the actions or uh, the steps that they take, the things that they do. Okay, all right. Now, the word teach here. So he says, teach a just man. That word just is the word righteous or one that is in right standings. So he says, teach, give instructions to them, and they will increase in their learning. Learning. Now I received it. Now I'm able to give it back. I received it. And now I'm able to give it back. Okay, um, in undergrad or in any form of education, all of us are in school, have been in school, etc. what we were expected to do was give the instructor back the information that they gave us. Okay, all right. So now what we're expected to do as believers is give God back what he gave us. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? So teachers make deposits and investments. Okay, parents or teachers, whether they want to own it or not, okay, uh, and so we're making deposits or investment. Big brothers, big sisters, or teachers, whether they want to own it or not, 
Everybody's not called to the gift of teaching, but to the ministry of teaching. Okay? You don't have to have the gift. So I can serve and teach, teaching people what not to do. As an older, exposed brother or sister, you can cut somebody else's learning curve in half. Why? I did this. You don't have to do it. So teachers make deposits and investments. Ah, I'm teaching. <laughs> teachers make it. So uh, uh, you're teaching uh, even sometimes when you don't know nobody's paying attention to you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay. So to have the gift to teach and perform the ministry of teaching are totally two different things. Because now I serve as the, um, te life teaches you. Mm. Okay. All right. So you have some experiences that have taught you some things. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Okay, and so so when we look at this and understand this, we we understand it's like going to an ATM. You 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 in order to get any information, you got to deposit the card. In order to receive the money or receipt, if you just want to know the balance, to receive something back, a deposit first has to be made. So. What's fascinating to me sometimes is that people are trying to make withdrawals and have made no deposits. Some of the folks that do the most talking in a lot of different organizations, church included, hadn't deposited much or nothing. <laughs> and see, you got to get wisdom in regards to that. Listen, you talking to folks that, that don't, it don't have, they, they hadn't invested anything. They hadn't invested anything. <laughs> no time, no talent, no treasure, no temple, nothing. Nothing. And be the, some of the ones that always got something to say. Operate in wisdom. Learn the ministry of ignoring them. I got a PhD in it. I can ignore you and still love you and treat you right. Well, y'all don't like this type of honesty. <laughs> no, no, because it, it, no, it, see, I've learned, listen. People that hadn't invested in nothing usually don't appreciate it the way that people that have. That people that have. So if it doesn't cost you anything, you don't have the same view on the value of it that the one that has invested in it has. So when you talk about the ministry of this house or, or what I do and things of that nature, <laughs> thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Ninja, where's your investment? Where's your investment? Where's your deposit? Where's your deposit? And we have to teach our children to, to understand investment, depositing an investment. Because I don't know one that don't like to receive. But you got to teach them how to, and that's what God is requiring of us. Because they don't, they'll have a poor value system when they get out there on their own. Because everything had been given to them, and they hadn't had to uh, deposit anything uh, in, in regards to that. Uh, so um, uh, um, I didn't have to work growing up. I didn't have to work growing up. Didn't have to work in high school. My dad's philosophy was uh, keep your grades up, play athletics, do well in school. I got you. We got an allowance, all of that type of stuff. Uh, but we still had to make deposits. We had to keep our rooms clean. We had to uh, wash the dishes. And so now how, how I was able to make the withdrawal uh, 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 was if I had done all my chores, if I would adhered to what was required of me. And if I didn't adhere to what was required of me, it affected, it affected, it affected my, my allowance. Hello, somebody. 
Well, look how y'all looking at me. I, I, I promise you I ain't scared. I'm going to stick. I'm going to stay right up in here. Okay. So, so now we do, we do, we do, we do young people. We do ministry, uh, uh, people, an injustice. Stop allowing people to withdraw if they've not made any investments. You have to put some barriers there. Safeguard yourself. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Because folks will pull on you, pull on you, pull on you. Man, listen, I'm not leaving here prematurely. I found out that this is the Lord's house. And if, if we're going to make it through a pandemic, it's going to be because of the help of the Lord and the support of the people. But I learned the hard way to stop trying to carry all of this. Uh, I was talking to my brother in the faith today, overseer uh, Sylvester Poole, and he says, uh, more, we have to learn how to let them go and let it go. Because it'll bust you wide open. What are you trying to hold on to and keep uh, that you need to let go of? Who you need to let go of? Okay. I don't know. That that was extra, y'all. I promise you all of that wasn't in my preparation. Uh, it was obviously uh, what God wanted to be released. So, 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 so teachers make deposits and investments. And now you'll see the return on that. It's not always instantaneous. I can't tell you the number of people over the years would come back and say thank you. Thank you for the deposit you made. Thank you for the investment you made. And at the most inopportune times, but, but I needed to hear it. Because who likes teaching a class or instructing and you don't know whether the folks you're teaching getting anything? Who want who wanna, who, who wanna, who wanna, who wanna parent and don't, it, it doesn't look like they're yielding any results from that at all? And it's quiet in here and possibly on the screen too. So, so, but, so Proverbs 9 and 9 gives us the foundation. So secondly, secondly, what I want to show you, uh, the James text, and it changed my life. James uh, chapter 3, James chapter 3, oh Lord, I'm behind. James chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. James chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Changed my whole landscape because I was teaching at one time uh, that it was no big eyes and no little U's, uh, and, and, and not as it relates to how we treat each other. Not as it relates to how we treat each other. God don't have no big eyes and little U's and how we're supposed to treat one another. But watch this, if you will. This text, James chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, it says, Brethren, let not many of you become teachers. Wait a minute. Let not many of you become teachers, knowing that you shall receive a stricter judgment. I said, whoa, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. So there is those areas, the gift of teaching. You're held to a higher standard. So those of us that stand before that harrow and teach the word of God and instruct people, because now what it says, it, it, it deals with becoming an instructor, becoming a master of teaching. OK, uh, you know, you, you're missing what I'm saying. No, it's not reading the commentary only. It's doing in-depth research and study to rightfully divide the word of truth. Huh. He says you're going to be held to a stricter judgment. OK, are you understand? So if I teach you wrongly, I'm held to a stricter judgment from God. Versus somebody that's teaching you wrong in the world. For all, for we all stumble in many things. And if we do not stumble in the word, he is a perfect man. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Able also to bridle the whole body. So he says, if I grow in this word, I can call everything else into subjection. Eh. Somebody said there's power in the word. I, I need you to put it on there. There's power in the word of God. Uh, and so teachers are not infallible because now he wouldn't put that there if we weren't capable of stumbling. Okay, y'all, please. No, no, the Bible doesn't waste words. To be truthful with you, all of us stumble. And that's what disappoints me sometimes with the Christian faith. I remind you again, let's put humanity back in Christianity. 
I'm not in I'm I'm not ever condoning doing wrong, but I I don't think we have the right to condemn anybody. We ain't got the right to condemn. So teachers are not infallible. Teachers even fall down sometimes. Mess up sometimes. But a good teacher can own them mess up. And allow the student to pick them up. <laughs> okay, are you with me? <laughs> we, we need people around us that watch this, that hold us accountable, that, but is also accessible. Ah. Okay. All right. No, no, no. So even as a teacher, I'm not infallible. I told you the twofold thing that I think that historically we've done wrong. We put uh, people on pedestals and the people that were put there accepted it. Not y'all have sinned, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. A righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. Okay, so it is not ever endorsing the fall, the stumbling or, or whatever, but it's to the humility that it gives us and keeps us. in. listen, I'm learning things that in and, and 20 years of pastoring and 30 years of preaching this year that I did not know. And I'm just as excited about it now as I was previously. So we've got to stay open. Why? Because we're not infallible, but the word is. Teach, boy. So the, the, the word of God is infallible if it is properly interpreted. Okay? But when man began uh, to use deductive reasoning to add their own perspective, we do it in injustice. Okay? That's number two, number two, number two. So, 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 no, so, num so number one, number one, number, number one, number one. It's important that you and I understand and gravitate to the reality uh, without hesitation or reservation. Teachers, teachers, teachers are, are, are those that make deposits and investments. Secondly, teachers are not infallible. Okay? All right? I was, I was having a heart-to-heart -heart with my daughter, um, um, and um, she says I'm the best dad in the whole wide world. She says I'm the best dad in the whole wide world. Uh, uh, but at the same time, I had to caution her um, and, um, uh, uh, and what you see um, is the better me. But I've not always been there. Okay. Can, 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 can you mature and grow and I, I, I show you some of my, my fallen states and you still have the same view of me? Hmm. Can I show you my cracks and my dents? And, and I think that that's sometimes what makes relationships unhealthy. <laughs> you, you need people in your life that can deal with all of you and not just the anointed you. <laughs> See, the anointed me is, is all God. But I'm not always operating in the anointing. So can you handle the me that ain't anointed? And still love me the same way. Come on, come on. And I told you last week, I emphasize it again this week. We can do it. We just choose who we do it to. And toward. Amen, lights. So he says, don't, don't ask for this gift. Why? Because now, even in teaching, we stumble. What about the stuff I don't like teaching, I want to teach or deal with? I don't necessarily, at one time, do the same type of research and study. Because, Lord, you want this. And I don't want to teach this. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to deal with this. You know? But as a student to the master teacher, I have to address and deal with subject matters and deal with uh, sharing truth even when um, it's testing me. <laughs> number three, number three, number three. So we, we, we teachers make deposits and investments. Uh, teachers are not infallible. But then come with me to Second Timothy, 1 Timothy 2 and 2. 
Second Timothy, yeah, I think it's, yeah, Second Timothy 2 and 2. Second Timothy 2 and 2. Second Timothy 2 and 2. Okay, listen to the text talk. And he says, unto those things that you've heard from me among men and witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Okay, so you get it, then you give it. You get it, then you give it. You get it, then you give it. But now he qualifies this, y'all. So now he says to other faithful men, one of the lessons I've learned is that how do you know they're faithful until they're faithful before you ask them to do anything? No. I, I've learned to be careful with what I'm committing to other folks. If, if, if you weren't faithful before you got a title, what makes me think you're going to be faithful with one? Hard lesson. Because now I'm one of the biggest optimists. I believe in potential. I believe in that. And, and sometimes me seeing what you possess or what you can become or what you can do has gotten me in trouble. But if you've not been faithful before, it's, not, it's a real good chance you're not going to be faithful doing. So now the third thing, what Paul says and suggests to us, he says, teach us, train, and equip. Okay? Teach us, train, and equip. So in summation, y'all, he says, what you've heard. So now you got to be either in a place uh, uh, because now what's the challenge with this type of virtual stuff? We don't know when folks checking off. We don't know who's checking off. Unless you put some on the timeline. <laughs> Come on. Come on. And so if this ain't a faith walk, I don't know what is. So he says, don't commit it to just anybody. Stop putting your pearls among swine. Folks, they're not faithful already. What are you committing to them? He says, commit to other faithful men that will be able to pass it on to others. So now, Paul says, teaching is discipleship. Teach, boy. Okay. Uh, my, 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 um, yeah, well, I, I use her all the time in a way, so she ought to be used to it now. Uh, uh, Tanisha, uh, my daughter, brought me to tears. Uh, and she just says, I'm so dramatic. Uh, she brought me to tears. I pray with her every morning. I pray with her every morning. Uh, and one of the things that I did was I found what was comfortable for her. So initially I was verbally praying and then I wanted her to verbally pray back. She wasn't comfortable with that initially. Okay. So I, I saw that she wasn't comfortable with it. So I started texting her a prayer. Start texting her a prayer. And so she responded back. Look at Lorenzo. Yeah, that's a long mile. So she texts me back a prayer. So we started having text prayers. I said, well, that's different. Okay. You know, I wasn't used to texting a prayer. You know, uh, uh, so we, so, so the other day we were on the phone and I said, I ain't texting you. I'm just going to pray while I got you on the phone. And so, uh, the yesterday, was it yesterday or today? Yesterday, uh, she turned around, and she didn't pray with me on the phone. She did a recorded prayer, and she sent it to me. Come on. So don't miss the moment. Listen, we've been doing this for a while. We've been doing it for a while. So it looks, because they're not responding the way you desire for them to respond, don't, rem don't, don't miss the response that they're giving. Okay? So teachers train and equip, okay? Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Teachers train and equip. And so it's almost like being uh, in the warm-up. You have a position coach. And, and, and so now what they're doing is teaching you how to be ready when you get in the game. So they're taking you through drills. They're training and equipping you to be able to deal with real life. Because now I, the fundamentals that I learned in sports, I was able to unconsciously or unintentionally use them in, in live game uh, situations. And I've learned that the fundamentals of user friendly in other arenas. Ah! Okay, so teachers train and equip. 
I want you to see the value of this because if you study scripture, the primary ministry of Jesus was the teaching ministry. Okay, are y'all with me? Last thing, and I'm out of here, y'all. I'm out of here, man. That, this, this is my bang. This is my bang. Romans 12 and 7. Romans 12 and 7. Romans 12 and 7 uh, gives us the climax of this teaching. It says, Oh, minister, let us use our ministry for he teaches his teaching. Let's close it. Well, we started off, we're closing it back off. Started, we're closing it back off. So teachers serve as models of Christian likeness, of Christ likeness. Okay? Teachers serve as models of, of Christ likeness. So one of one of the working areas of that word teach, uh, it 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 is to be a Christian teacher. Now this is where um this is where uh, this is where my faith uh, challenges some others because now I believe as a believer, I'm a believer no matter where I am, no matter who I'm around, no matter what I'm doing, I'm still a believer, okay? So now in that, that's what I mean when I say I don't believe in uh, the world has a way of doing things, so God tells us not to do it the way the world does it, but we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So now my Christ-likeness has to be uh, what I'm able to live out when I'm among those that ain't living the same way. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying to you? So now I'm teaching that you can get it and not uh, do illegal things in order to do it. You cannot, you can, you can, you can, you can, uh, uh, you can do things the right way. Might take longer. Uh, I was, I was, I was sharing uh, today that um, uh, sometimes it's challenging when you, when you're trying to do things the right way and, and some people are doing it another way and it looks like those that are doing it another way are really progressing doing it the wrong way. And it's like, is my way right and their way, is my way wrong and their way right? <laughs> Come on. Maybe I'm the only one that wrestles with that sometimes. But, though, so I'll talk to me. So what do you do? How do you handle it? When, 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 when the standards and the lifestyle that you t attempt to exemplify, you're, you're living your faith out. You've got to have a living faith. This Christ-likeness cannot just be confined to a facility. It has to become a lifestyle. I live this. 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 Uh, can, can I tell you one of my challenges? And, and, and we're out of here. So, so now, uh, uh, fellowshipping uh, with my brother and sister uh, uh, in the faith, and, and, and the sister in the faith says to me, um, she says, because uh, uh, they're not from here, and they said that... Uh, uh, that they deal with road rage. They used to deal with road rage. I said, child, I can write a book on it. Uh, I deal with it now. <laughs> I, de <laughs> I deal with it now. I deal with it now. And, and, and something happened. Something happened that tempered me. Uh, we were riding the other day, and Tanisha says to me, I think your road rage and rubbed off on me. And 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 that, cause I feel like I can handle myself. But if I've if I've exposed her to something, and she gets in a similar situation, and can't handle herself, and so it made me go back and reexamine my Christ likeness. What am I teaching? And some of the lessons that we have to learn is that when we need help in areas that we aren't strong in. The baby can't teach the daddy yet. They're not strong yet. But daddy can teach the baby. And are you teaching to fight for what is right or to fight for anything? See, we're products of our environment. And cussing and fussing and stealing and being promiscuous, if that's your environment, 
You don't know anything different unless someone teaches you. And what I'm hoping that you take from this lesson today is that there's the gift to teach and that's the ministry of teaching. And the ministry of teaching is how I can serve as an instructor to help others in a multiplicity of ways. But the gift of teaching is to be able to study and to learn the scripture to the point that where you can deepen other believers in their faith walk. This is the word of the Lord. And we pray that you've been blessed. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, believers are praying. God, we thank you for the privilege of studying your word. And we thank you for those that take this time seriously. And I pray in the name of Jesus now that you would speak to us where we are. Because some have the gift to teach. Some have the ministry of teaching on their lives. And I pray that they're able to decipher between the two. And we give you glory and honor in advance. I thank you for the souls that are in the valley of decision. I thank you for those that are being encouraged and helped to continue their walk. I pray now that those that need to connect and commit, they will respond. And those that are already connected, but their commitment has been wavering, you would strengthen that. And those that are in need of a spiritual home, you would speak to them as well. And we give you glory, honor, and praise now in Jesus' name. Amen. If this word helped you, can you celebrate our God right where you are? Come on, let me see. Let me see some hands. Let me see some hearts. Let me see some likes. Let me see it when I go back and look at it later. Uh, that's what I mean. My daughter says, you be saying, is anybody here? And you says, she says, you know, uh, no, these folks ain't here. Why you be saying, uh, is anybody here? I say, are you a person? You're here. Uh, so uh, we, we, we want this threefold uh, connection, this opportunity. One, if you're in need of a relationship. Secondly, if you need to return and be restored. And thirdly, if you're in need of a residential place of fellowship, this is the opportunity uh, that is before uh, each of us uh, to make this move, connection and commitment uh, to our God uh, in reference to adhering and living out this God-ordained principle uh, and practice. One, acknowledgement and confession. I acknowledge who he is. I confess who I am. That's how I get saved. If I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I'll be saved. For with the mouth confession is made until salvation, and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Secondly, if you're in the family of God, you've acknowledged him, you've confessed who you are, uh, the flaws that you have, because if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, he will do it. I'm a living witness, but you've strayed. You don't have to stray. You can come back, never have to look back or go to the back of the line. But what God does, he puts you back in line. Last but not least, if you're in need of a residential place of worship because the scripture tells us to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. In other words, don't forsake the doctrine. Don't forsake the teaching of the faith. It's important that we stay connected. It is important that we stay connected. It is important that we stay connected. The MT Zion Cathedral Church is a loving ministry, loving God through loving people. It is about people. God loves people. And so it is vitally important that we find creative ways to continue to be high, high touch and high tech. So if you fit in either of those three categories, we have three ways to connect and to communicate with you. We have a link, connect.mtzcc.net. We have an email, at man, at mtzcc.net. And last but not least, we have a number, area code 205-605-9466. Either one of those three ways you can be communicated 
will, you will be communicated with, and uh, I'll be the first one, and then there's a protocol that will take place immediately following that to welcome you or to help guide or direct you to the proper place. Thank you for your faithfulness, and we're believing that God is leading you where you need to be. Last but not least, if you're here under the sound of my voice, and you've been helped or blessed by any of the instruction, the teaching uh, that you've gotten, and it's been helpful uh, to answer some questions, to point you in a direction uh, to where you need to be heading, um, uh, this is the opportunity to share in the ministry of giving. God loves a cheerful giver. He says, don't give sparingly nor grudgingly, uh, but you do it cheerfully. Do it cheerfully. And so we made uh, giving uh, the platforms, Cash App, both locations, as well as uh, myself, um, as well as now we use the online platform, Givelify that makes giving easy and then those of you that continue to come by the drop box we appreciate you as well uh, we I was talking to one of the mothers of the church yesterday as well as today uh, we thank God for uh, the base and uh, we come to find out during this time uh, that foundationally we are a solid ministry can we celebrate God for that uh, foundationally we are a solid uh, ministry you all have really uh, impressed me and pleased God uh, with how uh, you've been faithful in supporting uh, your ministry and your man of God we really thank you uh, so much for that so for every gift and giver we thank you for them now as they put your principle to practice. They get the undeniable, irrefutable proof that they promise, that you promise nothing lacking, broken, or missing. And the vow is being rebuked for your sake. You're releasing wisdom, knowledge, understanding, increase influence. But not one day, everyone. Creativity. We declare that it is. But not one day, everyone. I am Lord Pastor. Trust the process in Jesus' name. Repeat after me. We are great people. We have great power we leave to get great proof now may the grace of god the love of our lord and savior jesus christ sweet communion of his holy spirit rest rule and abide with us hence now and forevermore may god bless you may god keep you is our prayer until next time the announcements phenomenal day everyone i am pastor taria jones and you are now tuned in to your weekly mount zion announcements Mount Zion, there are five ways that you can stay connected. All of our social media platforms are MTZ Zion Cathedral, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And remember, you can always email us at admin at mtzcc.net. Zion, join us every Monday for Monday Morning Meditation with Bishop A.M. Moore every Monday at 6 a.m. Mount Zion Cathedral, remember we have online church service going every Sunday. Join us online at 9 a.m. on Facebook Live at MTZ Zion Cathedral. Join us for online Bible study every Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Facebook Live at MTZ Cathedral. Friends and family, if you would like to connect with the ministry, there are three ways that you can do so. Visit us at connect.mtzcc.net. Email us at admin at mtzcc.net or you can call us 205-605-9466. We look forward to connecting with you. Mount Zion, we thank you for your continued support. Remember, there are three ways that you can give through Cash App, Givelify, and you can always mail your offerings and seeds in. On behalf of Bishop Moore and the Mount Zion family, we thank you for worshiping with us. We know you can be anywhere, but we thank you for choosing to spend your time with us. And remember, 2020 is not over yet, and God is still up to some amazing things.